Thanks a lot, Scott. Yeah. 안녕하세요. Uh, 저는 Henrico s a l e s f o r c e 입니다 <laughs> That's as much uh, Korean as I can manage for now. I'm still trying to learn Korean, so uh, work with me. Um, but I'm very excited to be here in Korea uh, for a few reasons. Number one, I think the people here are very friendly and the weather is kind of um, interesting. <laughs> uh, but more importantly, I think uh, there is a lot of excitement here in the market today. Uh, my job uh, as part of the sales engineering team is to travel across the region and share with them the vision of Salesforce, share with them the vision of cloud computing, but more importantly to help the businesses realize their business value on the cloud computing platform. And in the past four months, uh, I've been visiting Korea and there has been a lot of excitement uh, from the CEO that I've met, from the CIO that I've met, Everyone has been talking about how can I maximize the value of my business on the cloud computing platform. So I'd I love to share that with you today. And hopefully for today, uh, on the enterprise cloud computing platform, you realize that it is ready for the enterprise today and now, and it's going to be inevitable. Okay. So uh, Salesforce.com is a publicly traded company. This is our safe harbor uh, statement. To find out more about this information, you can log on to salesforce.com to find out a little bit more. As I mentioned earlier, there is excitement in the air right now with regards to cloud computing. It's not just in Korea, but it's across the world. You, if you look across on Google Trends, you can see that cloud computing as a keyword has a lot of mentions across the world. So cloud computing is definitely taking the world by the storm. But if you talk about cloud computing, what exactly is cloud computing? You heard Scott, my colleague, talk about that earlier, and the earlier speaker, Mr. Kim, talk about cloud computing in general. But from our Salesforce perspective, it can be classified into three different categories. The first category being cloud infrastructure. The second being, being cloud platforms. And where we are today for Salesforce is we cover both the application as well as the platform play on the cloud. What do I mean by that? First of all, if you look at the first one as an infrastructure, infrastructure as a service, it doesn't really illuminate the complexity of the software. Yes, there is no hardware to manage. There are virtual servers that are managed by Amazon, or in this case, Windows Azure, but you still would have to install the software. You still would have to configure the software. you still would have to size up the service that you need and install and configure the various applications that will build up your stack before you can actually start developing your applications for your businesses. So it doesn't take away that complexity. Now, of course, we have another class uh, of uh, applications where we allow you to build some form of software without having to deal with install, installing, uh, installing uh, any backend middleware or any databases. An example of that would be the Google App Engine, uh, but it's more consumer class. There is no security model that can be built in there. There is no disaster recovery that's built in there. There's no workflows that a lot of businesses will need. So if you look at what we have for the business applications on Force.com, we provide not just the infrastructure, we handle all the disaster recovery, the performance tuning that comes together in the back end system, that is transparent to you, but also we provide the other services that are required in the enterprise space. For example, you need to integrate with your backend systems or integrate with your supplier systems. All that can be done on our platform. You need to build logic, workflow, approvals. All that can also be done on a point and click configuration based interface. You, of course, you need to build user interfaces so that your business users can use them. 
and all that again can be done on our platform. All right? And you get the chance to see it in the demonstration later. So for Fox.com, there are three primary reasons why we are successful. Number one, we have been the market leader. I can see that a lot of uh, researchers have placed us in the innovation space or as a visionary space. And more importantly, I think our customers are very successful on our platform. Today, we have about 87,000 customers, and they have built about more than 150,000 applications on our platform. So if you average it out, each customer would have at least two applications that's built on the Force.com platform. And there's a fundamental reason why customers are building these applications on our platform. The first reason, the, uh, the, the main reason is because we put a lot of effort in innovating on our platform. You don't pay for any upgrades. We do three upgrades a year, and as soon as we roll out these functions and features, you get to enjoy it for free, most of it. Like Chatter was rolled out in the last uh, release, and that enables you to do enterprise class collaboration within the force.com application space. We're also rolling out Heroku, where you can build Ruby applications and deploy it on our platform, or VM Force deploying Java applications now on our platform, and of course, work with other partners that have built numerous other applications that are available for you to install on our platform. Right, today, we have about a thousand different partners that have built applications on the force.com platform. Okay, so before, if you, before the, the cloud uh, computing space has come about, how are businesses coping with that? If you look at a Gartner report today, you can see that as IT delivery scales upwards, business needs scales up much more rapidly. And there is a gap. And today, according to Gartner, there's a $50 billion IT gap, meaning that IT is not able to catch up with all the business requirements, and there's a huge gap. And that gap is $50 billion. That's huge. Why? Because a lot of the traditional platforms, before you actually have to build any applications at all, you, your IT organization, would have to first do the installation, then write code, deploy and test them, and also, also monitor and tune them because as you have more and more data, the application gets slower and slower. You may need to redesign the entire platform again. And of course, when you redesign it or when there are bugs that recover, are discovered, you have to patch and test them again. And according to IDC, that typical process in the enterprise space takes about eight months. So you can imagine, from an idea of a project to delivery, it takes eight months, almost a year for you to deliver one project on average. That's a long time in today's context. So if you talk to CIOs, what do they actually want? Right, so this is a survey that was done by Harris, and you notice that on top, the majority of it is about cost. And the second part, it's about speed. Why is it cheaper to come on force.com? Force a few fundamental reasons why. Number one, it's a lot faster to build applications. And number two, you don't have to deal with all the complex hardware that will fail over time. Disaster recovery, the developer environments that you have to build out, that is hidden cost to you. And of course, all the network systems and all the engineers that you have to hire to maintain all these systems. All that is taken care of on our platform. And of course, building it really quickly is essential as well. 